lot of people have asked me to put together a, uh, a lesson on Over the Rainbow, the way Eva Cassidy played it. And it was, it was of course, the song that, unfortunately, after she had passed away, uh, led to her unbelievable career. And so we're going to take a look at, at what she did here. Now, a couple of really interesting things about it. One is, well, there's a lot of interesting things. I'm not sure how many I'm going to bring up in the lesson. But uh, she didn't really play it the same way every time. Luckily, we've got a couple recordings. We have one from the Songbird album that was done in the studio, with, and we've got uh, strings in the back, background. And then we've got a video from Blues Alley that is just um, uh, stunning and, and uh, amazing because she plays it, brings tears to your eyes when you watch it and listen to it. So, um, but the main thing that she, one of the things that she just did a great job of was taking songs and kind of simplifying the chord progression to something that was, that was totally accessible to, well, to lots of guitar players. Now, she was very good at bar chords, and she was very good at um, arpeggio picking, like you'd have in a lot of classical pieces. So those are the main techniques that she uses. And then she also has additions to chords. She'll play a G chord with an A in it all the time, or a C chord with a D in it, you know, some added seconds or ninths, however you want to think of, think of those. But each of those gives the chords a little extra color and, and flavor. So what we're going to do in this lesson is I'll play through it. I have tablature to the parts. We have an, we have an intro that you just heard me play. We have an A section, which is of course and then we have a B section. And then she does a little solo. And we'll take a look at that. Then she comes back with the B section and the A section again and then ends with just a little outro that kind of is a reprise, which is, you know, pretty much how the song is, is done most of the time. So, um, we're not going to worry about the note-for-note -note stuff, but I'm going to show you a lot of the little things that she does in there, and the tablature that I have is, is pretty, uh, a great example of how she would have done it one of the many times that she played it. So, uh, let's see, what else do I have to tell you? One last thing, she does it, she did it with a capo at the first fret, putting it really in the key of A flat. We're gonna do the lesson without the capo, just for the simplicity of uh, finding where things are. And coming up, we will take a look at Eva Cassidy's arrangement of Over the Rainbow. I'm going to play through most of the parts, but I'll narrate a little bit as, as we go, uh, because as I said in the, in the first segment, we don't have to do everything exactly the way it is in the tab. So I'm going to play it, I'm going to read the tab and just do as well as I can to follow it, but I may make a few little changes, and then we'll talk about some of the variations that can happen in there. So this is the, sort of the playthrough segment. We have the, the introduction. To the A minor 7. And then when the first section A starts, we're on our G chord. I want to talk really briefly about Eva's right hand technique because she would typically play classical guitar style, thumb and three fingers, and the three fingers are usually either going to be um, set in what I would call home position on the top three strings or in a shifted position where your index finger is playing the D string. And when uh, sometimes she'd use her thumb for double double bass notes, she might do an arpeggio on a G chord using two thumbs, something like that, or she may do like a, the pattern in the beginning. I'm using my middle and index fingers on the second, uh, middle and ring fingers on the second and third, on the yeah second and third strings, and index finger on the D string, and just keep a li that little type of arpeggio pattern going. So um, she also she's also very good at, at slightly separating notes on the beat. So notes that are written exactly together. 
you would slightly separate to make the, the top note come out a little clearer. But other than that, nothing really unusual with the right hand. You have to have, uh, st just be aware of when you're on the top three strings or when you're on the second three strings. Um, so coming up, we'll take a look at uh, some of the parts specifically and how she plays most of the, the chords. Eva put together a really tasty and, and fairly easy solo in here, just picking out a few notes out of these chords. Coming up to play the G chord, using a D shape up at the 7th fret. And, and moving down to a pair of notes out of a D chord, sliding down to notes out of the E minor at the 3rd fret. So one more time, well, here it is. And she does a lot of, a few of these quick hammer-ons from uh, G to A in, in various places. The next couple measures, though, we don't have much going on. Just a little arpeggio on the B minor. And the G7. I hope I've uh, been able to shed a little bit of light on some of the things that Eva does in this song and in, in many other songs. And uh, one of the big things, I would, uh, as I've mentioned and still stress in this, is just understand the chord progression first. on just picking through something like that, making up your own little patterns, but try to work, bring in the, some of the little nuances that she does in there. It, it's just memorizing the four pages of tab that I have here is not really a good approach to this song. It's learn, learn what she does in some of the different measures of G and then mix and match them. That's really the thing that I want you to walk away from this. Know the chord progression and understand the five or six little variations that she did on all of them. Some measures don't need much. The F sharp 7. Maybe an instrumental version of this coming along soon. <laughs>